go. Mary Yang, Channel 8 News. Behind me is the infamous Darkness Forest, where rumors continue to circulate about the mysterious and highly dangerous rogue organization known simply as the Darkness. It is my attempt to capture some of the members on film. Okay, great job. Well, what are you waiting for? Didn't you hear the natives that dropped us off here? Anywhere past that line? We were on risk of getting shot by the darkness, and I really didn't sign up for that. Okay, but I didn't come all this way to get the same shot that every other news reporter gets. If I can get a big story from this, I'm guaranteed to move up. So let's go. speaking? John, it's Mary. Mary? I'm, I'm in the darkness force and the darkness are after me. Are you okay? I, I don't know. I'm really scared. Okay, uh, don't panic. I'll get some help and uh, go, play, go find a place to hide. John, hurry. Okay, uh, and, and may tear off your phone. They might be uh, tracking your signal. <laughs> Mary? Mary? Attention. As you were. So you find out about our next assignment? There is no next assignment. The war is over. They're just asking us to stay put until they find a cheap way to send us home. And how long will that take? Not sure. All I know is for the generals, as we speak, they're sending them home on luxury jets. Well, based on my estimation and how highly they think of you, we're probably going to have to wait until they gather enough wood to build rafts and have us paddle across the ocean. Something like that. I'll consider it an extra vacation. Hello? Pete, it's for you. This is Captain Lee. How may I help you? Sir, this is John Yang. I need your help. It's my sister. She's in trouble. Explain everything to me. She was doing a news report near Darkness Forest then. She may be in danger. She's hiding. I tried asking for a search and rescue team, but they're not willing to send anyone with the war being over. Plus, she's not a celebrity or a VIP or the child of a VIP. Since our squad isn't on assignment, you could go. 
to be the only one I can turn to. And you know why you need to go. All right. That was John on the phone. He needs our help. His sister Mary needs rescuing. Where is she? Darkness Forest. Darkness Forest? But nobody ever goes there. That's darkness territory. How many are going? Just us. That's a suicide mission. The Jones Squad got completely wiped out when they went there. And they had three times as many soldiers as we do. Our government has deemed her unimportant. We know she isn't. We're all off duty, so I can't order you to go. Nor would I if I could. This is the most dangerous mission we've ever been on. You all deserve to go home, I understand. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning. If you're in, I'll see you in the briefing room. If not, no hard feelings. Have a safe trip home. You know, I'm in. This is important. Yeah, I guess I'm in, especially since you packed all the food from the house. Let's start the briefing. Yes, sir. All right. As you all know, this is Darkest Forest. 15 miles wide by 6 miles long. There are mines in the northwest and northeast sections of the forest. According to the coordinates given by John, she is roughly here, in the southern section of the forest. After retrieving her, we need to go up through this small gap of land to the northern exit. Once we cross, uh, we'll be out of the range of the darkness. If there aren't any mines in the east or west and south, why not just go around those mines and towards the sides? Towards the west and the south and west are clear, except for a few of the weaker members of the darkness. The problem is, that part of the forest leads to the ocean without a beach to travel on. The east and southeast are out of the question. The darkness have their headquarters set up there. We need to travel in a Type S pattern. The mine detectors I made will allow us to detect the smart mines they use. However, they require time to detect, and that means we move slower. These aren't run-of-the-mill soldiers that we've faced. Most of them are elite commandos. Their tactics are to pick people off from a distance while hidden in the forest. Most of the time, their prey don't even see them. That's how they hide their numbers. We should be able to sneak to the northern exit without too many hostiles. However, because of our numbers, it will still be a difficult battle. I anticipate at least 40 once we reach there. What are the chances of survival? That's none of your concern, soldier. We all know why this is important. Gear up. We're moving out. a perimeter for any more of them. Yes, sir. Who are you? We were sent by your brother to rescue you. Are you able to walk? Yeah. Medic. Yes, sir. How many did you see? There was 10, maybe 11, but I, I can't really tell. Wait.
We should be safe for now. Well, how do you know that? The darkness function in groups of ten at most. We took out the rest of them while we were coming up here. Let's move out. How did you find me? Your coordinates were sent to me. We had to travel up the mountain to avoid the darkness. We're not going to be able to make it very far with an ankle like that. We should camp here for the night. Are you sure it's safe at night? Yes. You were able to survive the night because the darkness only operated during the day. Hmm. Hey, that's my phone. Oh, really? I picked it up on the ground earlier. Don't bother trying to fix it. I tried fixing it all last night and I couldn't, so I just gave up and went to sleep. So, with the darkness shooting at us, you guys stabbing at people, and me running for my life, I didn't get to introduce myself. I'm Mary Yang from Channel 8. And I'm Sergeant James Zhang from the military. This is Bart. So, you guys know my brother well? Yeah, we went to the same church. That's kind of ironic. What do you mean? Well, my brother's always going off about Jesus and Christianity and church, and I've always ignored him, but just look at me now, I'm being rescued by his Christian friends. Oh, I don't mean to be offensive or anything. It's just that I don't understand how you can believe in your faith. Well, um, well, so many people have, are so smart and yet they don't believe. And I've studied myself and I haven't found any conclusive evidence. I was valedictorian in high school and in college. And to be honest, I just feel like I'm too smart to believe in the Bible. Here's your phone. How did you fix that? I tried for hours last night. All I did was reconnect some wires, sync it up to the network. But don't make any calls though. We don't want you just alerting the darkness. How do you even know how to do that? Do you have that phone? No, I've never seen these before. But I've always been able to just pick it up and grasp it immediately. That and it's 187 IQ. 187? You're a genius then. You must understand where I'm coming from. You obviously are too smart for the Bible too. Yeah, I used to think that too. I always wanted to think things through and come to a scientific conclusion. So I set out with my intelligence and my research skills to prove all of them wrong. I wanted to show that, you know, people who believed in Christianity were just fools. But the thing is, the more I dug into it, the more I found out that Christianity was true. The more I looked into it, the more I discovered how true the Bible was. The Bible even says that if you truly seek, then you will find God. Thanks. Part of me just doesn't see the need for God in my life. My parents died when John or I were little. Since then, I've just always had the strength to succeed on my own. Everything else just seems like an unnecessary burden. That's what happened with me. What do you mean? Well, I was the most talented scout in the military. So naturally, the military sent me on all the most important missions. There was nothing I couldn't do. Felt invincible. What happened? Well, I was in the middle of a training mission. I landed off a three foot ledge. Now, naturally, I landed with a low impact, but this time, I completely blew out my ACL and MCL. The doctors couldn't explain it. I landed at from heights five times that distance and, you know, nothing's happened. So there I was for the next three months, laying in the hospital. I couldn't do anything. I even had to have the nurse help me go to the bathroom. I felt 
weak. My pride is shot. And then I realized that no matter how strong we seem to be, we are all weak. So I was lying in bed and your brother came to visit me. Now, usually I didn't want to hear about Jesus, but since he was the only person to come visit me, I decided to listen this time. Now he went through a bunch of verses, but one verse stuck to me. And to this day I can memorize it word for word. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before the destruction, a halty spirit before the fall. I realize that all will bow down before God. Some now, some later. I choose now. That's good to hear you recovered. He's still not the same though. Hey, knee surgery changes everything, okay? And it has nothing to do with you being older or chubbier. I'm not... getting older. Cover our tracks? Yes, Sergeant. Here's some water. Thanks. You'd be surprised how much S-Star traveling can really drain you. Yeah, and how single-handedly taking out bad guys like I do is tiring. Weren't you the one who just screamed like a little girl when that squirrel ran by? No. That is, uh, a secret military code. I was just telling the rest of the squad. Yeah, um, to tell us to, like, get some earplugs. Hey, Tom, that was louder than last time. My ears still rain from it. You should warn us next time. That's okay, I'm not used to it anyways. So, you guys seem kind of young, like my age. What got you into this battle? Well, we're part of the squads. We stick together as a team. Yeah, we've known your brother for a long time now. We're both college students, and the military pays for our tuition. Yeah, I'm in pre-med, and Thomas in biblical study. Biblical studies? What, are you gonna be a priest or something? Well, maybe a pastor. My dad's a pastor of our church. I think I might have met him before, when he came to my house to meet up with John. I can sort of see the resemblance. It must be easy being the pastor's kid. I mean, you get God explained and given to you 24-7. It's kind of like having your entire life planned out for you. Well, it's actually pretty difficult. Andrew and I both have parents who go to church every Sunday. We spend a lot of time with church people. 
Doesn't that make you guys a shoe in for heaven because of your faith? Well, we both used to think that. It wasn't until your brother John taught our Sunday school class that being saved isn't just about family tradition or association. So you're saying that just knowing my brother doesn't mean anything? Not for salvation. Yeah, and we went to church every Sunday, but deep inside we only went because our parents forced us to go. We were even baptized and answered the questions right. But if it was really left to us, we would just stay home and watch TV, hung out with friends, or done whatever we wanted to do. We had to truly examine ourselves. Yeah, we realized that we didn't really surrender to Jesus until we separated our family and friends out of the equation. We needed a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's when genuine changes started to occur. But we'll rather choose your situation over our situations. You would, but I don't understand. You guys seem so joyful, even in the middle of all of this. Well, it's better to know that you are not saved as opposed to thinking that you are, but you really aren't. Hey, what's that? Well, the kids in our kindergarten Sunday school class made to toy soldiers for each one of us in the squad. It symbolizes our unity. This is a darkness floater. They scour the area by themselves to find anyone. Then they report back to their main camp. They discovered us. Floater reported back to the main base. They're sending reinforcements as we speak now. Let's move out. Hang in there. Sergeant, how much further away are we? We got about five miles to go that way.
Sniper! Does it hurt? A little bit. I just... I can't believe they're gone. They have such bright futures, so... Uh, how so? Andrew, he is well on his way to becoming a medic. And Tom, he was going to replace his dad as pastor at a church. And now they're gone. To save my life. I would have thought you were like the other guys, going to church for almost your entire life. Wish I had. Would have helped me out in messed up former life. Your former life? I grew up in a broken home. My dad died when I was young. My mom left me when I was seven. I felt worthless, like a second class citizen. I spent the next few years in foster care, where the parents only took me in for the tax benefits. I spent it all themselves. They repeatedly told me I was, a, I was a burden and a waste of life. They barely fed me. Then one day, I was mugged by a gang. Luckily, one of my classmates recognized me and got his older brother to help me out. Apparently, his brother was a recruiter for a rival gang. They took me to their hideout where they clothed me and fed me. And I spent the next few years stealing and selling drugs on the streets. How on earth did you end up at church? I was actually sent to rob the building. I grabbed a bunch of stuff, including wooden box. Turns out, I robbed the church. And the wooden box was their collection box. Among the other things I grabbed was a girl's wallet. It didn't have any money in it. But it had an illustration of the Bible in a coloring book. Author wrote in the comments that God cares for the fatherless and the widow, and that there's always a heavenly family ready to show unconditional love to you. My biological family showed no love to me. My gang only showed love for those who performed and brought the gang money. So I decided to test it out and actually went to church the next day. When I went in, I saw a bunch of people praying, including Tom and Andy. Then your brother walks up to me, and we, in the next few hours we talk about Jesus. And he actually invites me to a couple of church meetings. After a while, I began to realize just how great the church family was, and that no matter how messed up my life and my family were, the church, and more importantly God, was ready to embrace me. That's a really powerful story. Thank you for sharing with me. Well, you can relate. At least some parts. Oh, John told you about our family? What do you think we were talking about all those hours? My dad, he was abusive, and he never paid any attention to me or John. I don't think anyone realizes just how much that can really tear a person apart. Is that why you decided to wander into the most dangerous force in the world? My worth isn't how far I advance in my career. Nothing else gives me any worth. And certainly not the countless and meaningless relationships I've had. 
I've learned that humans will eventually let you down. But God is a logical choice for me. James, how much further away are we? I'd say about 30 yards. How do you know? I don't see any mines. These are prototype next-generation mines. They're buried about a foot underneath the ground. They detect the electrical impulses sent from our brain to our muscles and prime the explosive. Let's move out. Stop! Hey, you're on a mine. Captain, I'll take your place. Let's move out. But we can't just leave him. There's no other way. We need somebody to keep the pressure on the mine. Captain, take this. What's going on? I can't throw it back. It's a planter grenade. It'll explode by itself in about a minute, but if I touch it, it'll explode right away. Bart, do you see any exits? We need a distraction. Captain, it's been an honor serving you. No, don't! I thought you said there was an opening. There was, for you and me. Either me escaping, or you two living. You did well. Get her home, safe.
had so much to live for. They were like family to me. I can see why you're a captain. <laughs> you're a good leader. Each member of the squad, they were like family. But I wasn't talking about them. What are you talking about? The darkness. I was once a member of the darkness. What are you saying? Fifteen years ago, I was recruited by them. I killed dozens of people, kidnapped many more, and I started all the drug trading that they have. How could that be? They offered me more money than I'd seen in my entire life combined. But how are you captain? How are you Christian? I was wealthy and rich like the people that I killed and kidnapped. Whatever I wanted, I could get. But whatever bit of happiness that provided went away fast. You're always told that material things don't satisfy. I didn't believe it. I still went for it. I realized the suffering that I was causing. I think the breaking point for me was one time I led a group into a village thinking that they harbored a rival group. Turns out the village only had women and children. Some infants too. But I still pulled the trigger, over and over again. Afterwards, I took some time off. I just couldn't get the image of young children dying at my hands out of my head. But that's when I met your brother and his pastor. At first, they didn't believe anything that they were saying about Christianity and forgiveness, but then they told me a story in Luke chapter 7. The story goes as a sinful woman uh, who lived her life just with lots of sin. She entered a house that Jesus was staying at, and everyone else in that house was scorning her and rebuking her, but she washed Jesus' feet with her hair and her tears. Unlike the others, Jesus forgave her sins. In a sense, I was like that woman. Jesus forgave my sins. Afterwards, I asked God what he wanted from me in my life. Then I joined up with the military. And with my knowledge of the darkness and the training that they gave me, they quickly promoted me to captain. It was finally time for me to use the skills that I learned in the darkness for good. Don't ever feel like Christ can't forgive you for the sins you committed. He forgave me. Things will change in my life if we make it out of here. You'll make it. There it is, the northern exit. Once you get 100 yards past that stream, you'll be in the safe zone. Well, there's so many of them. How did you expect to make it? Even though it was a long shot, I figured that with all six of us, we'd have a small chance of making it. But should we surrender then? Maybe they'll listen to you as a former member. That makes them want to kill me even more. Here, take this. Once you get to the safe zone, it has everything you need to get back home. But what about you? If I don't hold them off, you're never going to make it. But there's dozens of them. You're never going to make it. The rest of your squad died for me. That's five lives for one. Don't make it six. Each member of the squad was ready to go, but you're not ready. All of us in the squad, we knew that our eternity is secure because of our relationship with Christ, as I will be. You know you're not a VIP or the daughter of the president. We didn't do this simply because it's a favor to your brother. We didn't do this just because it's an honorable thing to do. If I don't get you through that stream and back home to your brother, we all fail. I'll take the two guards out first. Once I start firing, you run towards the stream and don't stop running until you get 100 yards out.
So glad you came back alive. It's been a really scary few days, John. Sure it was. I just I can't get over the fact that six of your friends died for me. They all knew that you were important. You weren't someone the government thought was worthy to send troops for rescue, but the six of them saw that your life was worth it. The captain told me that they all went because they were ready to die, but I wasn't. What did he mean by that? Well, I remember that squad that rescued you was Christian. They had Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but you, you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If they didn't go and rescue you, you would have been killed and you would have died in your sins. That means that you would have been condemned to hell. They knew that if they were killed, they would be with Jesus. And even though they knew it was a near suicide mission, they're willing to go to give you a chance of accepting Christ. I mean, your safety was their dominant priority. They went on a rescue mission to save you from being killed. Jesus, when he came to earth, was also on a rescue mission. He didn't come to make people more moral or have people sit in a church and building just do nothing. He came on a rescue mission to save people from eternal death by dying on the cross. How does the cross save? Well, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even a lifetime churchgoers like uh, Tom and Andrew have fallen short. Um, even talented soldiers like Bard and the genius James realize the truth of Jesus. I know our childhood was, was rough, but Daddy's was rougher. And I know you've done some bad things in your life, but the captain's done worse. But they're all forgiven. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus came to pay for your sins and allow you entry into heaven. I definitely need a change in my life. The Bible says we need to turn from our sins and trust in Jesus Christ our Lord, and we will be saved. We are called to a life of sacrifice and scorn from the world. Life's not easy as a Christian but it's the best life you can live, and it's an eternity with God. 
I definitely would want that life. Oh, yeah, okay. Samson's story. Alright, so there's this guy with this really long hair. Okay, really, really long hair. And what happens, he had, uh, he made a covenant with God, and God said that as long as your hair is long, you'll be strong. After that, the, uh, Samson became weak, and he ended up being arrested. So he prayed to God, said, God, well, give me strength one more time. One more time, and I will take care of these people. So God gave him the strength, and he, having short hair, pushed the pillars over, and the holy collapsed. Bah! <laughs> and all the people were gone. They're gone. All right, so that's our class today. And uh, everyone, get up. We're gonna go to the playground. You guys have 20 minutes. I can't believe it. My little sister is a powerful servant of the Lord. I've only been helping out with the three-year-old class. I'm just happy you're serving. I'm happy that their sacrifice wasn't in vain.